What's going on, Paisanos? V here, and I have my Flunderby deck profile. Uh, I'm going to be doing more deck profiles on the channel. Uh, I'm going to be going over a bunch of decks and talking about them and whatnot, especially as we're entering the Nationals. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my main side extra, and then I'm going to give you my, all my reasons for all. So we're going to do it right now. All right, this is a 40-card main deck. By the way, it's going second Flunderies. Uh, for the three in, for the monster count, we have three Robina, uh, three uh, Eaglin, uh, one Stree, and one t uh, Toucan. Uh, double uh, M pen, uh, three D shifter, uh, one Ryza, one Harpy Harpus, and one Barry Statue of the Stormwind. So this is the main monster count. Uh, most builds play, basically play this kind of monster count. Uh, for the spells, we got uh, three Flunderies of Avenue Adventure, three Flunderies and the Magnificent Map, triple Dark Rule No More, triple Lightning Storm. Now, this is supposed to be three Prosperities. I only own one currently. I'm going to be getting more soon in. Uh, but ideally, you would do three Prosperities. If not, you could do three Extravagance, your choice. Uh, three uh, Pile of Duality, one Flunderies, and Nox Spawned Winds, and one Call by the Grave. For our traps, we're running three Evenly Match, and one Flunderies and Dreaming Town. So that's the uh, the main deck. Once again, like I said, it's 40 cards. I'll go into all my reasons of why, uh, why I think this is a really good build and why I think this is probably one of the most underrated builds in the meta right now. Uh, for the sides, we're going to go into... Uh, three spells, so we got three MSTs, uh, one Harpy's Feather Duster, um, double Book of Moon, and one Flunderies and the Unexplored Winds, and one uh, D Fissure. Uh, for a mon one, we got monsters, we got one, we got Mist Valley, Apex, Avion, three D Barrier, and three Harpy's Feather Storm. So that's the side deck, once again, 15. And looking at the extra deck, we have uh, one Zeus, uh, one Fucho, one Downer, one Lyrilis, one Promenade Thrust. Uh, one uh, Gustav Max, one uh, Juggernaut Lieb, and one uh, Cyber Dragon Nova. Uh, with the fusions to follow up on that, you got your Mechaba, uh, one uh, Trishula, uh, one Entis for our links. We're going to have Underworld Gods of the Closed World, Appaloosa, Relinquish Anima, and Phoenix. So I'm going to go everything backwards now and give my reasons for all the choices and why uh, I like these certain cards. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Flannery builds, and now we're starting to slowly see them, like, make more sense of what they're playing before you see Flannery players just put the most random cards in their extra deck and go, eh, it doesn't matter, I'm going to get rid of them. But I think extra deck actually makes Flannery's a lot better. A Flannery's player will be a lot better if they explain almost all the cards in the extra deck. So, obviously, we have Phoenix. Uh, it's a card you don't always go into, but you really need to get rid of that field spell. What I mean by that is Zombie World. Uh, Relinquish Anima catches a lot of people off guard. Uh, Appaloosa can be a card you actually can go into in this deck. Uh, it's a really highly underrated card. Uh, Underwater Gospel of the Close Worlds, uh, definitely there for Attic Nisters, as well as Borla and Dragon. Uh, you got L L LNT Entest. There's still players running around playing Invoke. Want to take advantage of that. And speaking of players playing Invoked, we got uh, Nova Mechaba, which is once again another card. So basically, you would go Entis Nova uh, against like any player who's going to be running like Invoke Dogmatica. And then you just proc both effects and get value. Uh, we do have run a Trishula Dragon at the Icy Imprisonment. This is like a weaker version of a boss monster that this deck can actually go into. It's really cool, actually. Uh, we, of course, we still got, so we play double M pen. We run the, uh, the Juggernaut Cannon package. You don't always go into this, but it's an excellent option to choose. Uh, Promenade Thrust, once again, for the field spell. You want to have multiple answers, and that's one of them. Uh, we also have multiple ways to go into Zeus with uh, Kiganatra Fucho and uh, Lyrilis Assemble Nightingale. And then you're going to put it down on top of that bad boy and then go right into Zeus. So, once again, I think the extra deck for Flunderies is really important, really undervalued, underrated. Uh, I've seen every profile of Flunderies on, the, on YouTube, and I think this is about the universal best way to go into the extra deck. Uh, for the side, we'll talk about uh, Feather Storm. I really want to main this, but you can't in a going second build. Uh, maybe in a going first, maybe, but going second, you definitely want to side this. Uh, three D Barrier. I mean, obviously against decks like um, uh, Branded and, and Sword Souls. So I don't main this Miss Valley Apex Avion. If I was able to play a forty-one slot, it would probably be this card. Uh, the reason why you don't main this since we're going second, this is not the card you want to go into going second. It's not terrible, but it's not amazing. Yes, you can lower your opponent's resources and go into Apex Avion. I get that, uh, but that's not the ideal way you want to do it. Uh, once again, it's a decent card. I might consider maining it in the future, but I think it's really going to side. We do play one Fissure, and I know a lot of plays out there uh, play Fissure and Macrocosmos. I like Fissure. Once again, you're playing more, more or less going second. You're not going to be able to want to set your Macrocosmos for a turn. You really want to activate your Fissure and do the rest of your plays. This card's really good at stopping hand traps as well. Uh, Flannery is not explored to win. I think every Flannery player is playing this now because in the mirror match, this card's insane. Uh, Double Book of Moon. 
So this is a card that I used to main actually, and in going first builds, you always main double Book of Moon. But in a more dominant going second build, what's better? Book of Moon, evenly matched, Lightning Storm, Dark Rule No More, like what's better? Uh, don't get me wrong, I love this card. This card's great, and we are go we are going to go first. This is a card I want to have in my deck over cards like Dark Rule No More. But if we're not going first, if we are going second, this is going second build. And once again, uh, I think Book of Moon is a great card for the side deck in that instance. Um, and then for back removals, so you got players playing Cosmic Cyclone, which I don't like because of time. You got players playing Twin Twisters, which I don't like because I want to maintain resources. Uh, we already have Lightning Storms in the main already. I think Twin Twisters is a great side out option, as well as one uh, Harpy's Fell Duster. We're playing three Lightning Storms, you don't need a main Harpy's Fell Duster. And I think twin three MSTs are uh, just the best way to get rid of the field spell. Your main thing is worrying about Zombie World. If Zombie World's gone, you're, you're basically open to do whatever you want to do. Uh, looking over the main, there's not much uh, uh, of a difference, but I really want to point out the going second cards. So for going second cards, his and this is why I like this build because listen, if you're going, if you're playing Flames, you're going first. You're still playing a going second card, right? It's D Shifter. So why not try a going second variation, running cards like three D Shifter, three Emily Match, uh, triple, oh, wait, oh, oh boy, triple Lightning Storm, and then triple Dark Rule No More. You have twelve going second cards, and then you just need to access your engine and you pop off. Um, now, one thing we're seeing with a lot of Flummy players is they are playing a lot of a lot more pots. I run, um, oops, I run uh, six pots. Ideally, you want to run more. Some players like to run seven. I've seen as high as nine. Me personally, I think this is a decent start starting ratio. You can always consider after getting your three prosperities to do extravagance, maybe one or two. Uh, we're seeing builds that go three duality. Three prosperity and two extravagance. We're seeing that in a lot of builds. Uh, but once again, if you're playing a going second build, um, you know there's a chance a lot of these won't even resolve. And if these do resolve, they get you to your going second cards. And if you get your going second cards, you can do a lot of damage. Um, D shift is a card if you open going first. It's not terrible, but going sec if you're going second, you drop D shift there. Your opponent makes a bad board. You either dark room for the negations, lightning storm, and then you just create your board and you basically kill him. You can't kill him. You lock him out because you go into your barrier statue combo. So that's why I like this a lot. Um, one card people are, are, are seeing in some builds and some and not in all builds is called by the grave. Some builds are playing and some builds are not. Once again, if I'm playing going second, you still gotta worry about your opponent's graveyard. Like that, that doesn't lower the ability of what your opponent could do in the graveyard. It doesn't lower the ability of them owning a Ash Blossom Joy Spring in their hand. So I think this card's essential in this deck, no matter what your build you're playing. I think Call by the Grave is really important because if your opponent has multiple negation on board, okay, maybe you dark rule them. But if you try to do your phone place and you run to an ash. That Dark Ruler did nothing. So you need that Dark Ruler to mean something. And Call of the Grape can help you do that. Um, another thing I do play in this, in this build, by the way, I, um, I think one on one's the average. Some people want to play two series, but I think one's more enough. You can recycle it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, is Harpy Harpist. This card's insane. Um, this card's really good because when you're going to Barry Statue, if you go with Bean in your opponent's turn, you can add Harpy Harpist after resolution. Bring out Harpy Harpist. Bounce your Bean. Bounce the normal summon monster your opponent's going to bring out to stop your Barry Statue. This card is really, really, really undervalued in this deck. Some builds are starting to play it more now. As time goes on, I wouldn't be surprised if more people start playing Harpy Harpist. Uh, you might even consider playing a second Ryza in the main since we are playing one, uh, we're not playing Apex Avion. That's also an option you could do as well. I personally think one Ryza is more than enough. After you do one Ryza play, you're mostly going to Eaglin. And if you're going Ryza Eaglin, um, that's a ton of damage on board, and you should be able to kill your opponent immediately after that. So that's why I decide one's decent for now, but you might want to play around with two. Anyway, uh, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this build. This is a going second plenary build. Uh, it works really well. It's really consistent. Really easy to play. Uh, the, my, my thing with Flundry is I don't know. I never knew how to play this deck until I owned it. And now I'm playing and I'm testing and learning it. Uh, I, I, you could try and do a book. Some people can learn that way. I only can learn by like physically playing these cards. Especially even more so at like a tournament where I can play these cards. And I can see how they interact with the other cards in the game. So that's why I like about Flundry a lot. Um, but yeah, that's that's the whole profile. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Uh, check out YJOPasana.com if you want to gra uh, grab one of these Black Edition Field Centers. Uh, Nami Tokens is sold out, but we have a lot of great tokens on this website. Uh, Adventure Tokens, Nib Tokens. They're only going to be for a limited time, so ch definitely check them out. But uh, hey, there you go. Alright, um, also big shout out to Imperium Duelist for this green deck box. The reason why I built this entire deck, besides the fact that I want to know how to play it, uh, Imperium Duelist sent me a green deck box, and what goes better in a green deck box than Flundery? It's like, what deck in the game uh, goes better than Flundery? So, I have this amazing green uh, Imperium Duelist deck box. Even the legs are in green, this is absolutely gorgeous. If you want to know the sleeves, by the way, uh, I actually bought these. These are the uh, uh, Imperium uh, the Imperium Duelist Pegasus sleeves. 
These feel absolutely slick. They're actually comfortable. I think, me personally, these are better than um, a lot of sleeves out there. And the reason why is because a lot of sleeves, they crack. These these have not cracked. These are very durable. A lot of sleeves, um, if not cracked, they just like fall apart immediately afterwards. Play choice are amazing sleeves that are good for like one big event. And maybe if you're lucky, two or three locals, you're squeezing it out of this. Uh, these sleeves last a lot longer. Uh, you can buy them on Pure Duel's website. Uh, use promo code Python 10 if you want to do that. Same with the deck box if you're looking to play Flunderies. And uh, yeah, once again, I, I bought these myself. These these sleeves are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and they feel great. This is what I'm using today. And they feel nice and smooth. Uh, I've been playing with these sleeves nonstop. And uh, yeah, they, once again, they cycle easily. <laughs> anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. It's your boy V. And you guys all have a great day.